parents and teachers, booting out the school board. Elect Stacy Renee Greta for Ardell School Board. All right, welcome everyone. My name is Mr. B. I am a kindergarten teacher for the district. I've been here for quite a few years, more than enough to know that we have major problems in this district that we need to talk about. Now, like any kindergarten teacher, I'd like telling stories. This is gonna be a tough one, but this is the story of our district. Now, to be clear, well, it's unfortunate, but it's a windy day. Go figure. So I'm going to have to work with it. If my camera ends up, you know, rolling over this, my, my poster, whatever, I'll do the best that I can. So just letting you know. All right. So like any good teacher, I want to go through an outline of what I'm going to talk about. So I'm going to move up a little bit. First off, I want to invite you to meet me at the corner of Winnetka and Rockford, Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays from four to six. I'll be out there with my Gigantor poster. We're going to be protesting the district. We're going to be campaigning. We're going to talk about all this, okay? But in this video, I want to talk about our district problems and the teacher narrative, the story that we have been living as teachers for the last six years that parents, guardians, and people in the district often have not heard about. I want to talk about the teacher bashing, test score shaming, the lack of any accountability for extreme behaviors, the lack of help for behaviors in this district. I want to talk about our teachers being blamed for everything, how many teachers have left this district, and I want to especially talk about the school board because that's what this is about. November 3rd, we want them out. There's three that are up for election. We want all seven out eventually, but three is good enough for now. Well, so I'm gonna continue. The school board has served as nothing but a rubber stamp for the absolute disastrous policies of the not so superintendent, former superintendent and current superintendent. Same thing, oh, I'm losing a little thing I'm gonna need later. Alrighty, so. And we are going to last talk about the lack of accountability for anyone, any of the cronies, okay? There's nothing but a gigantic crony nest up top. Teachers have no power. We've been able to have no part in the decisions, and it's just simply been a disaster for everyone. I also want to talk about how we get our story out to the parents, because this is the winning issue. This is what's going to allow us to beat back the school board cronies and actually create change in this district, okay? So, I wanna talk about some of the puppet lines, lawn signs that we've seen all around. I wanna talk about our strategies that we're going to need to use. You can already tell what mine is, okay? And I also wanna talk about, well, not so much controversy, but who I'm endorsing, okay? Stacy, Renee, and Greta. I wanna talk about that a little because there's, there's been a lot of debate about that. Okay, so, and then last, of course, I wanna talk about making this into a movement. All right, so, I am going to put this down and keep this. So, all right, hopefully we can see pretty well. Uh, that, that's fine. Okay, so first I wanna say, you know, one thing that we can all agree with is teaching is a position of passion. And by the way, I'm sorry I have to yell, it's, the wind is pretty bad. So, but teaching is a position of passion, okay? This is something that you don't just hop right into. This is something that we love, we do what we love, and we do the best that we can, all right? So, having said that, one thing that is interesting is to consider what it would take to send so many teachers away from a district. This district, Robbinsdale, together, we, uh, you know, it's, it's unbelievable what has been done to us. So first, the teacher bashing and the test score shaming. It's interesting because teachers, you would think, teach in schools. But it's hard to say that in this district. We're more like test factories. It's test after test after test. It's nothing but accountability for the students. It's racing from one standard to the next. All we do is test. Our standards are never high enough and teachers are always to blame for everything. We get almost no help and this is well, let's talk about the next um, issue, is the lack of accountability for extreme behaviors. So alongside the endless amounts of testing is a lack of accountability for extreme behaviors from about 1% of the students. We have 99% of the students that for all intents and purposes are basically invisible. And this has made it so difficult for us to do our job. It's year after year where we are spending 95% of our time just trying to keep you know, one or two students from having absolute meltdowns and that has sent so many teachers away it has been so disrupted to the class it's not helping anyone and more specifically it's not helping the students who need help who have whether it be mental health issues whether it be special education issues whether it be you know just behavior issues it's not helping anyone when it's a revolving door to the principal's office and back or it's just after a while students learn that they can basically get away with everything we have no accountability because 
we have our superintendent, our parent, or, or our school board have decided that there will be no accountability in this district. They've taken this from St. Paul. St. Paul's been the template, but the idea is that basically our superintendents, former and current, and our school board have decided that they are social justice warriors because they just simply ignore the problems of the district. They don't give us any help, and we basically take the blame for everything. We're blamed for everything. We are leaving the district en masse. And you have to consider what it would take to get so many teachers to leave this. Not just the district, but the entire career. For those of you who have worked in corporate America, the number of ex-teachers that you have probably run into is probably pretty spectacular. I've worked for corporate America myself, and it's the same thing over and over. You know, this is a difficult job. You know. Often we're overworked, we're underpaid, we're underappreciated, but it's the behavior and the test score shaming that send us away for good. And these are things that need to stop. And these are things that the school board has not only, you can't even say they've been burying their heads in the sand about this, they've been rubber stamps of approval for what our not so superintendents have been doing. And this has had such a devastating effect to know that as a teacher, you are never going to be backed up by your administration. This has also sent away so many good principals. It's been a game of musical chairs with the principals. It's any principal who does not drink the Kool-Aid, who does not pay homage to the dear leader is basically basically sent on a voyage from one school to the next, to the next, to the next, until they eventually give up and go off to another district. But this has also had an effect on the parents, and it certainly has had an effect on the students, okay? This is, goes as far as property value. People who move into the district, they hear about what's been going on, and they don't want their kids to even go to the schools. And to be honest, from some of the rumors and some of the things that happen, a lot of it that most parents don't even know about because it doesn't make the news, I can't blame them. This is the stuff that needs to ha stop, okay? Like six years ago, before the two current or former uh, superintendents were here, it wasn't like this. And I'm not gonna paint a magical picture that this was like a perfect district before, but talk to veteran teachers. They will tell you it did not used to be like this. But the teacher bashing, test score shaming, the lack of accountability from everyone up top, that goes all the way. That's the school board, that's our union which sold us out, our union president who completely sold us out. And that's a nice nest of cronies all the way at the top who really have not been held accountable for anything. And it has made it so difficult to do this job because we teachers care. We always have cared. We know that the parents support us. But the thing is, is when you're going into a job, when you don't know what's gonna happen in the next year, let alone the next week, everything's a roll of the dice. It depends on what class you get. And you know what? If you have a student who, you know, like has special needs or, or like has major behavior issues, you know that you will be thrown under the bus and blamed for everything. And while you're being blamed, the school board and the superintendent get to play like this game where they're the social justice warriors who everything they view is through a lens of equity and equality. You can't tell me that you care about equity when you don't care about 99% of the students in this district. That's a fact, okay? You can't tell me that you are all about equity and equality when they're just invisible to you and you're only trying to work with a couple students and you're not even doing a good job working with them. So, breathe. Having said that, okay, I wanna talk next about what we need to do to get our story out because, sorry, I'm gonna take a drink of water. A lot of talking to do. And again, I apologize for the walk, for the wind. It's windy Minnesota day, but you know, this happens to, this has to happen today. I can't wait another day for this. Oh, dipping over. Okay, I think we're good. Stay, stay, okay. All right, so here's the deal. So I can go on and on and on about these conversations we've had for the last six years in the teacher's lounge, okay? And oh, they're tough. There's a lot of tears shed. It has not been fun. But that doesn't create change. The question is, is how do we get our story out to the parents? And how do we basically use that to get votes in November 3rd? Because you drive around Robbinsdale School District, okay? You go all the way from North Minneapolis or Robbinsdale, basically all the way to Plymouth. It's a large district. You're gonna see a lot of our puppet signs, okay? You're gonna see a lot of uh, John Ventos and so on. For all intents and purposes, it's the same policy for all seven, okay? But the question is, is that why are these, why are these signs up, okay? I mean, if all this has been happening, why, why are people putting these up? Part of the reason is that the average parent and the average resident just simply doesn't know. It's not their fault. How could they know? What do they do? Go home after you know eight hours of work and be like, hmm, I wonder what's happening on the local 
281, uh, you know, politics and whatnot. They just simply don't know. And the sad part is, is that we teachers have been scared away from actually basically telling our story because we've seen what happens to even our bosses, our principals. The musical chairs is played not just with the principals, but with the teachers too. Because if the principals aren't out enforcing and being a henchman for the district, guess what? They get lost. So they get put in this impossible situation. So the thing is, is that with these signs, you see, you know, John Ventel sign, I'll just use John Ventel for an example. You see the signs. Might as well say, oh, losing it again, losing it again. All right, I think we're good, I think we're good. Uh, this is gonna be an interesting video. Okay, you see the John Vento signs. Might as well say John Doe, though, because the truth is, is that people think that they're electing some Mr. Rogers figure or some Ned Flanders figure. It's this uncontroversial position where, you know, it's just a nice school board member who's just, you know, gonna pass some, some a budget for gym equipment or something, right? Like, who could vote against that? That's the thing is that parents don't know, but the other problem is that the role of the school board is not known. The school board, like the union, is supposed to protect us. They are supposed to be reflective of the teachers. And if I haven't mentioned this before, when I say the teachers, I'm talking about 99% of the teachers. And I'm being nice about that, okay? Like, seriously, I don't. I have yet to meet a teacher who supports this administration, this regime, it's ridiculous. But the thing is, is that again, the puppets on, ta on top are comfortable. They're never held accountable for anything. We don't matter. Like on top of the pyramid, they're not even on the pyramid. They're all island in themselves. So the question is, is how do we get this message out to the parents? Because the parents will support us. They always have. They just don't know. So first off, do we knock on doors? We got like 10,000 houses, okay? Are we gonna knock on 10? I mean, we've only got a couple weeks left. And by the way, I apologize for not doing this early. I've had, I mean, if you can't tell with the wind, I've had nothing but wind issues when I go out on the corner of Winnetka and Rockford. It's, it's been crazy. I'm hoping this works, but I'm in it for the long run. So, but knocking, it's probably not gonna work. I mean, do we put endless amounts of lawn signs? No, those don't change. And that's an important thing to talk about. They, seeing you know John Vento or whoever like or, or even some of our people that doesn't change people's minds they're nice okay it's name recognition but that's not really gets the teacher narrative out that's not what gets the issues out okay so that's not how it's gonna work social media do we do dancing TikTok videos do we like comments on Facebook and Instagram and you know snapchat and whatnot you know it's not to say that some of this can't help I mean certainly we got to give credit to the Facebook page right we got to give credit to uh, the, the Concerned Citizens, whatever it's called, the Concerned Citizens of Robbinsville Facebook page, that helped. But that's not what was really going to get people out to vote. In my opinion, what we need is direct campaigning. Old school, okay, old school. Out on the streets, on the corner of Winnetka and Rockford, showing people that this means something to us, okay? Showing people that we are willing to bear with the wind, but also the weather, if it's 45 degrees or 65 degrees, we're out there because this means something to us. And what better poetic justice than to be out there right in front of the crony castle, what I call, well, it's what the school board, well, basically the, uh, um, the ESC, okay, right on that corner, because it's poetic justice that this castle that might as well have a moat, might as well have a drawbridge, and for those who are fans of Austin Powers, might as well have sh sharks with lasers on their heads. It's been so, unex it's been so, uh, well, basically not accessible to us teachers for these last few years. So the fact that we stage our rebellion, our campaign, our struggle right outside there, I like that. So I'll keep it at that. I think that's the place to do it. It's a little windy, but there's a million cars that drive by and you know, oh, losing it again, losing it again. All right, uh, wind calm down. All right, what you, oh, for God's sakes. Okay, so, all right. So, you know, they say that a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, you know what? I think a nice design banner has got to be worth a thousand votes. But a hundred plus people behind protesting, you know, that's got to be worth the whole district. I think that is the way for us to win. Now, take another drink, breathe. So, I want to talk next about who to vote for, okay? So, and I'm going to turn this a little bit so we can see better because this is a little controversial. Now, the Facebook page, the Concerned Citizens of Robbinsdale, okay, um, have agreed that, okay, we should have 
Uh, Renee, we should have Greta, but you'll notice I have Stacy, okay? I don't have Eric Pone up there, and I want to talk a little about that. Okay, so of course, uh, where's my Greta? Well, I had a sheet, but anyways, Greta has impeccable, um, I mean, like her experience in this district has been amazing. Uh, you know, 12 years as a principal in this district, 18 years as a teacher, hard to pass that up. Now, I want to be clear about something. You know, I don't want to split the vote, but I also got to go with my gut instinct and what I've heard from other teachers. So, Eric Pohn, you sound like a nice guy. You're a fighter and we need that. That's fantastic. And it sounds like you have experience with school boards before. That's fantastic. But I have to be honest, the posts that you put up about, you know, year-long school uh, for a couple years to, you know, to catch up and to speed up test scores and whatnot, that's a losing issue, okay? And even if you've gone back on that, the fact that that was even posted says a lot. Now, to be clear, if you end up winning, that's fantastic. And if you, uh, if, if people want to come up with Eric Pone posters right in front of, of, you know, mine, that's fine, okay? That's completely fine. Above all, I want us to win. I want all puppets out. And again, I don't want to split the board, but I got to be honest that, like, I've heard nothing but great things about Greta, so I'll just put it that, that. Whether it be Greta or whether it be Eric Pohn, I'm supportive of the group, but I just have to go with my instinct. And what can I say? I already made the poster, so there it is. Okay, so last, and thank you for bearing with me because I know the wind, this is not how I plan to do this, but this has to be put out today. Okay, so lastly, this is a campaign, it is a protest, but it's a movement, okay? This is a movement that doesn't end on November 3rd. It continues. We got three school board members that need to be booted. But really, we got seven, okay? We got seven and it goes much more than that. And we need to not be afraid of the repercussions because they have won based upon our fear. The school, the teachers have been burying our heads in the sand, waiting for someone to come along and save us. But we are the ones who are going to save ourselves. Well, there it is again. There it is again. We are the ones who are going, I'm gonna move forward. I'm gonna probably have to hold this thing. We are the ones who are going to have to save ourselves. We are the change that we've been waiting for. I'm not just talking about being poetic. This is just real, okay? Every single day, we've had to make a dollar out of 15 cents. We gotta grow, you know, our roses out of concrete because essentially, we've been treated so bad and we've been waiting for something to, just some magical change to come along. This is the change, we gotta fight for it. This is why beyond November 3rd, we need a new superintendent. We need new union representation. We can't have people selling us out like this. And to be clear, this is not a purge or a purity test, but at the same time, we have to be real about what has been done to us. It's not right what has been done to us. We have a right to stand up for ourselves. And I wanna say, you know, parents, students, students especially, kids from, you know, students from Cooper, from Armstrong, meet me out there, meet us out there. I mean, this is your chance for your teenage rebellion. Put the cell phone down, not being mean, but like your TikTok video can wait. Put the cell phone down, come out and help us out. We need your help. We can't do this alone. I honestly think that if we don't make drastic changes in how we are marketing this, we're going to lose. Because why else would people vote for us? They just simply don't know. This needs to be a movement that continues beyond November 3rd. We have drastic changes that we need to make. And you know what? For the last few years, you know, we've always talked about together we are 281. No, together they have been 281 for the last few years. We've had no say, but we are taking the power back. And I hope you'll be a part of this change because we need your help. If you like this video, please send it to whoever you think will care. But meet me out Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, maybe even on the weekends, okay? I'll be out there fighting the good fight. Fight it with me. Thank you.